Hey everyone, Caleb with the Antique Book Collective, and today I'm getting to you guys with an interesting video. So this one, guys, it is the explainer video on how I oil my books and how you guys might want to oil your books as well. This is not the reason uh, video for the reasons why you should do it. It's not the one on which one is my favorite, all that sort of stuff. I am making a lot of different videos on oiling your book covers because it is something that is very important, but we're not getting into that in this particular video, guys. This video is literally just about oiling books. So this one right here, guys, this is a book that I have. It is from the year 1900. It's not oiled. I don't know if it's ever been oiled. This one's in better shape than some of the other ones that I have oiled already. Uh, the reason why I chose one that was a little bit better shape was just because it's going to be a lot easier to film with because I have some guys that have like some peeling parts. They have the spines loose. They have disconnected uh, spines, all these sorts of things. So this is just for the sake of ease. Uh, if you guys are having books that have like peeled leather that you want to reapply, there are different glues for that. I have uh, some recommendations for that. I should have some more videos coming out soon on glues as well. But guys, uh, uh, there's a lot of different things. This is literally just about conditioning your book uh, cover uh, and that sort of stuff. So with that said though, I'm just going to dive right on into things. So first things first, let's go over the materials that you need. So if you guys are doing my favorite uh, oil blend, uh, there are several different oils that people use, but my favorite blend is mink oil paste and uh, neat's foot oil. These are my two favorites, uh, absolutely stinkin'lutely. However, people also use linseed oil and lanolin, and some people even use Vaseline. Uh, I'm not using those, I'm using the two I showed you already. So I'm setting those over there. So guys, my favorite blend that I have for doing this is 80% mink oil and then 20% uh, uh, neat's foot oil. That is what I find has uh, been my favorite for the look, for the application, all these sorts of things. So that's that for those particular books. Uh, so, sorry, for those particular oils. Next thing, you'll need a little bowl to do your mixture in, because again, guys, I'm not doing just straight one or the other. I'm doing a mix. The mix is, I find, a lot better than just one or the other. If you guys only had, Mink oil and needs foot oil, and you only wanted to do one, I would lean towards mink oil. Needs foot oil will darken it a little too much, and it is a little bit harder to apply, but you know, uh, but end of the day, I do recommend the blend. Next thing you'll need is some cling wrap. Uh, any brand will do. Uh, for me, I like the Glad brand. They are cool. You'll also need some rag towels. If you guys need to buy some rag towels, I have an affiliate link down below. I'm kidding. You guys hopefully have rag towels. If you don't, go to a garage sale. You can pick them up for 50 cents each, if that. I mean, if you find the right garage sale. But you want to find a big one to have. So the big one, guys, you set that one down on your table. Use that as your work surface. That is what I found, found works best. Uh, of course, I'm not going to be doing that in this video because I'm doing it and I'll be holding it the whole time. But I will be putting it down on my lap so I don't spill anything on my pants. But with that said, though, guys, you'd put that on your table. Then you have another one right here. This is one that I would be using as my hand towel as we get, went along. And then I'd also use it to dab dry the book or slightly rub it as I'm going through everything. Uh, do not get one that is really hard. You want to get one that's so soft you'd sleep with it, you know, that sort of thing. So guys, that is what you want to do. Uh, for me, I even have another towel right here. That's just because I accidentally grabbed three, but honestly, guys, more towels definitely does help. If you're doing a whole lot of books, I recommend getting a whole lot of towels, uh, preferably ones that don't have holes like mine, uh, but you want to get enough towels to cover up all the area that you will be working on, but also while you set the books later. You don't want to set these books on a hard surface uh, right off the bat. You want to leave them on a soft um, surface. Usually it'll be towels, but it doesn't necessarily have to be towels. Just make sure it's something that your leather cover is not going to stick to. Once you uh, oil your covers as well, they will be a little bit tacky. If you over oil them as well, they will be very tacky. So do not stack them against each other or else when you peel them off, you might actually be peeling off leather, especially if the leather started out in really, really, really sorry condition. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, that's not to say that you won't be able to put your books together after some time after they dry. I find that you have to leave them like a week uh, if you are oiling them and they really are taking a whole lot of oil. If you're just doing a little bit of oil, uh, you might be able to get on, get along without having to have them all sit for a long time. But if you have books that like need a lot of oil and take a whole lot of oil when you do it, uh, you definitely will want to be a little more careful with what you're doing. Um, I'm not going to really tell you how much oil you should oil your books because that is something that you sort of will see as you're doing it. If you have a book that's drier than everything, I mean, the moment your oil touches it, it will like all be absorbed. That's a good indication that you probably need a little bit more oil. Whereas this one right here, guys, you still have some shine on it. That shows that it still has some moisture in it. In fact, I can feel it. It still feels like leather. I have dealt with some books, guys, that it feels more like this towel right here. It's dry, it's soft, it even, it's got like stuff coming off of it because it's just so terrible. So that's something to keep in mind. But uh, besides that, guys, you might want 
potentially uh, Q-tips. For me, I like using my fingertip, but Q-tips can work. And also cotton rounds. Uh, the cotton rounds, I'm a little iffy on. Some people swear by them, some people don't. Personally, for me, when I'm using uh, my particular blend, I like applying it with my fingers. It gives me a good amount of control. However, I do like to have the cotton rounds present as well because they do have their purposes. So I'm gonna take one of these out just right now. Uh, you will be surprised. It only really takes one to really do this. But with that said, uh, I'm just going to put a towel down on my area really quick before I get going and I know I don't have much of a table but I have a little bit of a tabletop here this will just make sure that I don't get oil all over my stuff as I'm recording so uh, there we go right there got my towel got my stuff and guys remember right off the bat I said I wanted an 80 20 mix so 80 percent mink 20 percent needs foot oil the reason why I go 80 20 uh, and have this one be the bulk of it is because this one guys it is a nice base it's uh, make sure that my oil is going to be thick enough that I can spread it with my fingers if I so choose but with that said, I'm just gonna plop that right on in there. I don't have any uh, exact measurements because guys, it's gonna vary one book to the other. I'm not gonna tell you any direct uh, exact numbers because your book might be bigger than this. Your book might be smaller than this. So I'm not gonna tell you, oh, three cups of this, two cups of this. Of course, you can definitely make larger batches. Uh, larger batches probably just means you don't have to put in as much effort down the road. But for me, I'm just doing a nice small batch that'll do this book and then have some leftover so I can do some other books later on. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm not actually measuring things out. If you guys want to be absolutely perfect, you can. But for me, I find just roughly accurate is pretty stinking good uh, for my application here. So I'm just going for 80-20. I'm literally eyeballing it. Um, of course, that might mean I do a little bit more like 80-30, sorry, 80-30, 70-30 or something along those lines, but this is just sort of what I'm doing. Um, if it's warmer where you are, guys, your uh, mink oil, and if you left it in the sun especially, your mink oil might be rather liquidy right now, so you might want to maybe potentially reduce how much uh, Neats Fit Oil you do, which I personally wouldn't recommend. I love the Neats Fit Oil. I love what it does for the color of the book. It really helps restore things, but potentially you guys don't want to have it just be too watery. So potentially even you guys could wait until a cooler day. Uh, just be sure that you are doing this in a nice temperature area. I recommend something between like 60 or 70 degrees to do it in. That allows the book to have its like leather pores open a little bit more so it can really take the uh, oil well, um, that sort of stuff. There is of course a lot of other things to keep in mind Mind. but for me I sort of like the 60 degrees to 70 degrees that's Fahrenheit of course guys um, I'm not talking Celsius uh, but that is something that I personally like um, as you guys can see right here here's my current consistency it will drip off my fingers if I give it a little wiggle wiggle that is actually a little bit too watery for my taste I mean it's right close to where I want it but I'm going to get a little bit more mink oil so just about that much more and I'm just gonna show you guys roughly the consistency that I'm shooting for so guys uh, in my house right now it's maybe 65-ish. I don't actually have my thermometer with me. Believe it or not, I don't sit there with it, uh, but that's roughly what I have. So that's roughly the temperature you guys should be doing all this in. Of course, it's not a sin if you do it where it's hotter. It's not a sin if you do it where it's colder, but that's sort of what I like to shoot for. Uh, as you guys can see, it's still a little drippy, but it does have a little bit more consistency. Um, personally, guys, if I'm really describing this if in like a, the best way I can, Think about you go to KFC and you get the mashed potatoes and gravy and then you mix it all together. That's roughly the consistency I'm going for. It's the mashed potato gravy mix that you do at uh, KFC. But with that said though guys, this consistency right here is something that would be really easy to spread with the uh, cotton round or with your towel, your really soft towel. When you guys do this guys, you will want to let me just grab the towel. So there are a couple ways of doing this. Remember I said I like doing my finger, but you can literally just do it with your little cotton towel. Again, guys, get a really soft towel for this. You do not want a hard abrasive one. And if you have a really, really sad looking book, like one that's just been abused its entire life, you actually, in my opinion, at least, you should do it with your fingers because you do get a little bit more of a tactile feel. You're like, okay, I cannot rub this part, this part, or this part, or else it will rub things off. So that's why you want the really, really soft towel, but guys, sometimes the soft towel is still not enough. But what you wanna do, guys, I'm gonna show you. You take your uh, thing and you just put it on. As you guys can see, I have a little bit much on it right now, but you put it on and then you just, just do nice, soft, concentric circles. Sort of like when you're coloring something in, you want the color to actually look good. Just nice, soft circles, guys. Just go and go and go. It's really simple, really straightforward. Uh, before I do this a little bit longer than this, though, I'm, I'm actually gonna stop right now. Uh, you don't wanna leave any oil just sitting like, um, let me just say, actually, that's not gonna be enough for you guys to really see, but let's just say I have a big fat gloop right here. You don't wanna leave that sitting there uh, for very long at all, guys. You want to get that 
um, wiped up and spread out because if you have it sitting somewhere too long it will actually end up taking and it'll go through your leather and it'll get into your book board and you do not want your oil sitting on the book board the book board guys that is the cardboard or whatever our other hard thing they're using uh, that is the backing for your leather cover you don't want to have the oil go all the way through to that because that's not good for your book but guys you basically just want to make sure that the reason why i was doing straight lines there was just to pick up some of the oil though guys oh uh, you want to make sure that you're doing the nice small circles keep on going if you see yourself doing any damage stop right stinking away do not continue uh, do not pass go to not collect two hundred dollars but before i continue anymore guys i'm sure you guys noticed i forgot to mention this earlier but i have plastic wrap covering all my pages uh, personally i do not think i need to use the plastic wrap but i am doing it for you guys and it is a nice uh safe gap in case you ac accidentally get a little too excited when you're doing this and you're oiling 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 and you get the pages you don't want to do that but uh, we are going to address that a little bit more later on but if anyone's doing this along with me I wanted to say that a little earlier on sorry I didn't but with that said though back to this I'm just oiling and I am doing my nice slow soft very soft guys I am talking like the touch you would do to like I don't know pet like a bumblebee or something like really really soft you don't want to hurt this baby but really soft and um, I'm finally at the point that I'm a little low on oil so I'm just gonna dab it on uh, get a little bit more on and I'm actually going to wipe off a little bit so it's not too um, overpowering of oil and you guys won't be holding this when you're doing it I'm just holding it for the sake of the video but guys it's literally just as simple to, as this honestly it's even easier when you're doing it on a table but again I'm not on a table right now I'm on my hand because I need to make a video for you guys but it's really simple you want to just do this sort of thing and guys it's really interesting because once you do it and once the book actually gets enough oil in it you can actually go back over the same spot and you will see that it doesn't change color like it will actually have enough oil it won't change so like I'm putting oil on these parts right here that I already hit it's not getting dark whereas these spots here that I just got are getting a little bit darker so that's something that you will definitely see once you have done it enough and the book is a little happier you know but with that said that is just that method of using a towel for me it's not my favorite one but it's the one that I've seen several people use but that is something to keep in mind so I'm setting that down right now I'm gonna go at it with my finger a little bit but before I go at it with my finger guys I want to say one important thing that I also uh, re regretfully did not mention earlier on and that is about um, your book before you start you want to make sure that your book is clean of course there are going to be some books guys that are absolutely filthy and you can't clean them very easily because if you start cleaning them you'll like rub off all the leather it's going to do a whole lot more harm than good so that is something to keep in mind there are some books that you might need to throw some oil down before you can start in on the uh oiling sorry before you could start in on the cleaning there might be some stuff that you end up like some junk that you end up getting stuck in the oil and ruining the book in a couple small spots but like if potentially the book is bad enough and you tried oiling straight away it could have done more damage sorry and you tried cleaning it straight away that could have done more damage whereas if you get the oil down it gives the leather a little bit more i don't know it's like a force field almost against some of the garbage of course it is best to clean the book first if you guys are cleaning i personally like to get like a horse hair brush and i use that just to dust things off the horse hair brushes and other such softer brushes i know horse, horse hair is not the softest one out there but it is softer uh the nice thing about those though is they are just hard enough that they can get some junk off and they don't normally do any damage to the leather if it does damage obviously stop you might want to go and get like a feather duster or something like that that's softer but you want to make sure that things are dusted you don't want to have any excessive junk stuck on it but odds are you probably will be pretty good when you're starting out this book here i did dust off um, and i did check it to see if there was any junk on it before i started in um sorry i didn't mention that earlier on but if anyone's uh, following along with me be sure your book is clean before you go too much further sorry for that uh so as you guys saw though i did that little part right there with my fingers i like to do the edges with my fingers uh it is very easy to over oil things when you're using your fingers since this i mean you get the oil in it and it sort of like holds the oil just like a paintbrush whereas if finger painting you're going to get a lot more uh, oil in one spot than the others so that is something to keep in mind the reason though why i like to do my fingers instead of the towel on the edges is a lot of the times the edges you'll have the shelf wear and a lot of the times the edges will also just be chipping in general so that is something that you can do to make sure that you don't chip things up so i like to just spread it out very nicely 
along the edge. Of course, guys, I'm not doing this edge just yet. This is just me coming up to this edge that's on the face of the book. So, uh, of course, I might be going over just a smidgen, but that's not really my focus just yet. But I'm finger painting just the corners right now. And again, guys, if I have a book that is like in really, really sorry shape and the leather's just falling apart, I might finger paint the entire thing just to make sure that I'm not doing any damage to the leather that's still on it because guys, it definitely can do some damage. But with that said, I'm just doing nice. I, n I know I'm not doing just circles the entire time. There are some times that I'm doing straight lines like this. The reason guys why I'm doing some straight lines like this is because the leather is actually embossed. So I'm trying to get the oil worked into the actual embossing there as well. Uh, the circles, it does it to a certain extent, but there is some stuff that it sort of misses uh, every so often. Uh, notice I have the oil on one finger right there and I just swapped over to another finger that doesn't have as much oil on it. The reason for that is I didn't want to spread that much oil, I just needed to apply just a tiny bit to that little spot right there. But basically guys, you want to go through this entire thing, you want to make sure that everything's oiled very nicely, you want to make sure that you don't have any spots that you have the oil sitting too long. For me, I actually do have some spots that I've had it sit too long, and that's just because I'm not able to work on it like I normally like. I like to have it set down on the table flat, guys. When you have that, it is so much easier. I highly recommend getting a good light that you have uh, sitting over you, so honestly, your dining room table, which is where I've done it, uh, that works very, very well because your dining room table is normally pretty well lit. But uh, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, with that said though, I'm just going to quickly oil this whole cover. I'm using two fingers now to spread it. Um, just making sure I got all the different areas. Because remember guys what I said, of once you've oiled it enough, it sort of doesn't take as much oil after that. So this is just like one final oiling that I like to do. I like to do basically two passes with the oil. I like to do the first pass to sort of like moisten things up to the point that I don't feel as scared of touching the book honestly uh, and then the second pass is sort of where I just make sure everything's perfectly covered so with that said I'm just I know I'm not showing you guys very well but this is sort of what I'm going for once it's all done so please know I haven't gotten to the uh, hinge just yet but look at the rest of the area it's pretty nice it's pretty un uniform except for that one spot that I just got wet because my finger because I'm showing you guys but um it's pretty uniform it's pretty nice and uh, it will dry out to be much more uniform and guys touching this leather down I know that I mentioned earlier on that I was like oh I touch it it feels like it still has some moisture now I touch it and it's like oh wow that feels like brand new store-bought leather it's very nice I really like that with that said though, we're getting on to the hinge now. And normally when I'm doing these, I hit the hinge a little earlier on. The only reason why I'm not getting to that just yet is I wanted to show you guys the color. But I like to hit the hinge of the book a little earlier on because the hinge tends to be one of the spots that are, are a little bit weaker than the rest of the book. And that's just because you're opening and closing it and it's a dry piece of leather. It's going to actually crack and it's gonna break. In fact, excuse me, um, look at this spot right here guys. So I hope that focuses. But as you can see, we already have some cracks forming along this particular hinge. That's not something you want. So for me, I'm going to hit it right now. Sometimes, if it's bad enough, I will actually hit it with one of the liquid oils first. So in this case, Neat's Foot Oil, but I also have linseed oil. Um, I would potentially, if it's really bad, if it's really cracking, I might hit that particular hinge with the oil that's the liquid-based one first because uh, the mixture that I do with the mink oil, it's a little bit more solid. And because it's a little bit more solid, um, potentially might tear up things a little bit like as you apply it odds are it's it won't if you're being careful enough but the reason why i do the liquid is because it is it sucks into the leather a little bit faster as it sucks into the leather though it will potentially suck into and be absorbed by the pages so that's something you do not want uh so if you guys look right now though uh, i am not doing circles right now so you will want to do circles as often as you can on as much of the book as you can but for me on hinges i find that the circles can be a little bit iffy so I like to do like a straight line when it's cracked like this I like to do a straight line along the cracks don't press too hard like guys remember how I said it's like petting a bumblebee here right here we're talking like petting a butterfly wing and you're not supposed to touch butterfly fly wings so I mean that's that gives you an idea of how soft I'm going right now but this is literally just trying to get all the moisture that I can not a huge amount but just trying to get moisture into the uh, hinge right now just to make sure that it can move around and not get any more damage so again guys this one it has it's seen better days but it's definitely like just this little bit of oil I've put on 
it's night and day difference. It helps once the oil uh, gets into the leather a bit. It actually sometimes like seals up some of the cracks a little bit. Of course, it's not gonna be like perfectly sealed up like a glue, but it does definitely do wonders. With that said though, guys, there is that on that particular hinge. And because I've done that now, I'm going to get the remaining parts of this front cover that I did not do previously. And see, I'm back to doing the circles. I'm back to petting uh, Bumblebee strength for doing this. So it's, it's a time consuming process. So you probably, I'm gonna say it guys, this is for uh, business purposes. So if you are doing this for a business, you probably don't wanna spend three hours oiling a book that's worth $3. But if you guys have books that are worth more than that, it might be worth your time to oil it. Uh, if you guys are doing this for your own family uh, heirloom books, obviously it probably is gonna be worth like any amount of time that you put in. Uh, with that said though, guys, we are now onto the spine itself. Uh, I keep on rotating this book and I actually do not recommend that you guys rotate these as you're doing it. I would honestly, if I was doing this my own way and had all the time in the world, I would do one side of the book and then I'd leave it for a few hours. Then I'd come back and then I'd do the next side of the book and leave it a few hours. The reason for that guys is once you do it, uh, I hope this actually shows up. Um, so once you guys do it, it's going to have a little bit of a shine on it. So I hope this is coming through, but you will leave fingerprints. You do not want to leave fingerprints on these books because it actually will show up once it's all dry. But with that said, onto the spine right now. So guys, spines on old leather books are like some of the most fragile things in the universe. I have so many uh, old leather books that like you open the spine sorry open the book up and the spine just starts crumbling so i do like to go after it with the finger on this case or potentially i like to use uh, a, the cotton round which i have right there which i will use in a second the reason why i like to do it with those two is just again guys because of uh, how gentle it allows me to be uh, in the case of this particular one so if this is petting a bumblebee this is sort of between petting a bumblebee and petting a butterfly wing it's soft but it, you can do a little bit more pressure on this particular book of course if you have one that's really crumbly you might not want to do that but uh it basically is something that you have to do and you have to sort of figure out on your own with that said though that's just how far i've gone on my finger now here is just the cotton round so I don't personally like these cotton rounds that I have right now. Um, there are a couple different kinds, I guess. There's ones that have a little bit more like a, of a solid face, and then ones that's all like absorby on the other side. This one sadly is absorby on both sides. That's a that's a word now, uh, but that does complicate things a little bit. I like this one because it allows me to do like a dabbing application a little bit more, which is very nice, especially if you're talking about doing it on the uh, hinge. But as you guys can see, I'm doing a little bit of dabbing, a little bit of uh, spinning around. It's really nice for this. Um, I find that the cotton round does actually like rip up a little bit of stuff. So as you guys can see right there, there is some leather that I've actually ripped up from doing this. Of course, most of that leather is actually loose stuff. So it's not, not really a huge loss, but I'm doing like the face sort of stuff right here, but I'm not going to do the bottom part of the spine right here because this bottom part is a little crumbly. And yes, I used crumbly as well. Uh, but as you guys can see, I just scooted up to do this one really carefully but I'm getting a little bit of oil on my finger and then I'm actually wiping out mo off most of it until I have just a tiny bit of, tiny bit, like I'm not even gonna say how much that is, but not much at all. And then I'm going to like very, very, very gently apply this tiny amount of oil across the entire base of this spine right here. And that is just to start getting the moisture in and uh, I'm actually gonna get some more oil from my thumb, which I put it on and gonna keep on going. This book guys, um, again, it's in rather rough shape, so there are obviously some issues that will happen because this book was not well treated. But if you guys do get very good at uh, maintaining your books, this will not be much of an issue for you. Uh, but again, I'm just sort of gently oiling it in, making sure everything's done. Uh, I'm going back to like butterfly uh, petting on this one just because it's such a soft, uh, abused area here. But with that said, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. You guys will, the nice thing about oiling, honestly, is the fact that it will change colors uh, as you do it, because you're dealing with a book that hasn't seen oil for however long. Once you oil it, it will darken up. Guys, it will lighten up as it dries out, but that's just what we're seeing right now. And it's nice that it darkens up because it shows you the areas that you have and the areas that you have not hit just yet, or potentially the areas that you've hit too hard or not hard enough with oil. But with that said, uh, I'm just oiling things in Remember how I said that I like to go over things twice? This is just me going over things a second time. And guys, I hope that you took a lot of attention, sorry, paid a lot of attention to things 
uh, when we first when I first was showing you this spine but I mean if we're looking at it now it's it's night and day difference it looks very nice um, it's funny because sometimes you can actually make out a lot of the text on it a lot easier since it sort of has uh, the added ability to like yes some contrast going on is what I'm going for and it's really nice that you can get that sort of contrast but with that said we can now see this sort of thing we actually have a few uh, light spots right here that looks like it's oil but it's actually the stupid cotton from the cotton round because it's not a good cotton round so obviously you want to get good ones for that with that said though we have now gone over the uh, let's see the uh, back cover and the spine sorry it's a little weird dealing with it as I'm handling it but um, as you guys can see I'm now on to this final uh, cover so I'm just going to wipe off my fingers really quick on it, as a very official professional would do. That's a joke. Professionals probably would not do that. Um, but I'm not a professional. I'm just doing this for my own book. This book was in really sorry shape. Actually, the set was in good sorry shape. This one's actually pretty good compared to the others. But um, as we see, I'm just getting back to the circling and the oiling. Honestly, I shouldn't. Eat I shouldn't be holding the towel like that. I should be making sure it doesn't contact the book because it could catch on a bad piece of leather, uh, like a chip or something like that. But as you guys could see, I'm not doing that right now because I don't have enough hands. But I'm just going, doing the nice concentric circles. The concentric, sorry, the concentric circles are really the important thing here, guys, because it makes sure that you cover every square inch, or for our Canadian viewers, uh, every square goose. It's a goose, right? I'm kidding, a centimeter. Um, but you want to make sure that you cover everything up nicely. And I did do a little bit heavy with that particular uh, towel, but it's not too terrible. So, as you guys can see, I'm getting a little fancy. See that? Some figure eights. I am a professional ice skater or oiler, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I'm just going through things, making sure everything's done. It's nice because once you oil it, you can actually feel, I mean, it's smoother to go over with the towel. Like, you can tell that you've hit everything and you've hit it enough once the towel, like, it, it sort of changes. I don't know the exact description, but it's like, let me just think. I mean, it's almost like you're buttering a piece of toast and it goes from like, you know, when you first take it out of the toaster and you butter it and you're like making it crack all over and then you've like applied it all over the entire piece of toast and you go over it a second time. It's like sort of moisturized to the point that it doesn't crumble and like shoot crumbs everywhere. That's sort of what we're going for here. It sort of gets to that point. But with that said, uh, I've now covered the bulk of this main area right here. So now we just have the end, the hinge and the ends right here. So back to the finger. Um, I've seen a lot of people that say to just use the towel the entire time, but guys, I have a lot more luck doing the finger on these uh, sort of softer and more fragile parts of the book. Of course, the people that I've seen that say to use the towel on the entire thing, they normally are dealing with a lot prettier of books, whereas uh, for me, I'm dealing with books that look like they came out of, like, I don't know, like <laughs> Death Valley or something like that. These things are so dry sometimes. But as you guys can see, I'm just going through things. And when you get to the corners, if your corners are as rough looking as mine, they actually will get darker than the rest of the book. Because this part of the book, guys, here, it's in great shape. You have the nice finished leather. These parts right here, you can see the lighter parts on this cover. So those lighter parts are actually where the exterior uh, finish of the leather was actually sort of like ripped off, uh, say, from shelfware or just being read, that sort of thing. And because it was ripped off, it's not nearly as waterproof as it used to be. And because it's not as waterproof, it's going to take a whole lot more oil than the other places. Now, that's not saying that you should give it more oil. You don't want to do that whatsoever. But it's just going to absorb it a whole lot more easy. Uh, sorry, a lot easier than the other spots. And because it's absorbing it a lot easier, it'll just darken up a little bit more. And once it dries out, it actually may stay a little bit darker because of that. Which, of course, is not something we really want to see. But it is something, it's just sort of one of the realities of trying to restore and uh, recondition some of these really old books guys it's not going to be perfect because it was not maintained very well whatsoever but with that said i'm just going along i'm still doing this one here's a really nice spot right here where we just have a lot of the leather is chewed up so as you guys can see um we have like chocolate colored down here now uh, that's just because that leather was really chewed up there but i'm just oiling it in rubbing it in really nicely. I don't want to press too hard because potentially if you press hard enough you might rip the leather or like break the leather loose of the glue that's holding it. I haven't ever seen that one happen but anything's possible when you have an old enough book. Uh, but as you guys can see I'm just slowly going along doing this. I'm swapping between these two fingers. I like to keep two fingers relatively clean so like if I drop the oil anywhere I can like scoop it on up or I can have like a clean finger to apply it somewhere else that I might want it or need it. But um, yeah again I like to keep it down to just two fingers that I'm really getting oiled down. 
Uh, for me, I actually can see some of the uh, circles that I've done with the towel, which is one of the issues that I have had with doing the towels before, is um, potentially if your towel's ratty enough, like mine, uh, it might actually leave, uh, I'm gonna say like a linen sort of design on it, I don't know, but you can sort of see like the different, um, I'm gonna say the hairs on the towel, there we go, uh, and you can sort of see those lines. So that's another reason why I like to go over everything, just with my bare fingers at the very end, I like to go over everything really quick like. Um, of course, I'm not pressing hard, I'm doing, I'm gonna stay with, I'm gonna call it but bumblebee petting uh, hardness right there. But I'm just going over everything, over everything, one more time, sorry guys, um, just to make sure that everything is perfectly covered and to make sure that I'm not leaving behind any of those little uh, towel hair lines on it. But uh, once you do that, it is a whole lot nicer. I like to keep with the circles because it's a little harder once you look over things to see circles than it is like if you do straight lines or like a wave pattern. Uh, if you do little circles, big circles, a mix of all of it, it's a little bit harder for people to look at it and be like, oh, I can see you oiled it within the last three days or something like that. So that is something to keep in mind. But with that said, uh, this spot right here on the hinge is a little dry for me, so I'm hitting him again. And it's sort of something that you guys have to eyeball. And I know if you're brand new to this and you've never done it before, you will hesitate and be like, I don't know if I can do this myself. Honestly, guys, go to the local Goodwill or something like that. There are so many books that have leather covers. Make sure it's actually a leather cover and not like pleather or something like that. But there are so many things that you guys can just test this out on if you've never tested it before. And you guys can do it yourselves. Lots of people have done this themselves for years and years and years. It's not going to be the worst thing that ever happened. Of course, there are things that you can do and should do to make sure that things stay safe, i.e. the plastic wrap. But it's not the worst thing that you can do. I mean, if I can do it, any idiot can do it because I'm a pretty big idiot sometimes, let's be honest. But as you guys can see, I've gone over everything. I'm just looking things over to make sure I got everything, making sure I don't have any spots that I've left over too much oil. It's really easy to leave extra oil behind in the embossed areas. So I like to, my fingers are mostly dry now, I like to just run my finger over thing, things, make sure that I'm picking it all up that I can and spreading it out as much as I can because I don't want that oil being, um, soaked in too much into the book board. Again, guys, you don't want the oil to get su sucked into the book board because that can cause damage to the book board itself. Potentially, if you get enough oil on it, it could so soak through the book board into the pages uh, beyond. So you do not want that happening. Um, as you guys can see at the top of the spine, it's got a little bit of a lighter area right around there. So I'm actually gonna go over it again. Uh, the reason why it's lighter there, I'm assuming, is because um, there used to be some something black up here um, and that was peeled off so I'm guessing it's just damaged but I like to go over some of these lighter areas a second time just to make sure that it's not somewhere that I missed in this case it's not somewhere I missed and I knew it wasn't somewhere I missed but I just want to do that for you guys with that said though we are now getting on to the uh, more difficult uh, side of things so a lot of people might even like not do the edges and there's actually part of this that I will not be doing for you guys. It's somewhere that I have not done before and it's somewhere I don't plan on doing and that is actually the part of the book right here, this part of the leather right next to the paper. I haven't done that yet. I haven't seen a need to really do it because uh, most of the time it's it's a little bit more risky, so I haven't done it myself. There are people who do it, and if you do it, you can be very, 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 very careful because you do not want oil getting onto your paper. So uh, with that said though, guys, I'm gonna show you two methods that I've personally done. I do not use the towel or the cotton round for this part right here, but we are just talking about the topmost, sidemost, and uh, bottommost edges of your covers. And of course, we've already done uh, the spine on the bottom side, so I'll just quickly do the spine on the top side. Luckily, the top side of spines normally aren't too terribly worn out, because uh, obviously you're not really rubbing on anything. The bottom side's the one that gets rubbed on the shelf. But just hitting that really quick. As you guys can see, it's literally that simple to do it. Get a very, very light amount of oil on your finger, and then just follow along the contour of this. And for me, I personally like to put it on and then pull out towards the exterior of the book. That's what I sort of like to do because otherwise I might put it in here and then get it onto the side closer to the paper and I don't wanna risk getting the paper all oily. As you guys can see, I did a little bit too much oil right there on that one. I'm looking for something that's more like just, just barely wet or a little excessively wet and you get it just on the tip of your finger and then you can use the rest of your finger to really work things in but as you guys can hopefully see i've done this side have not done this side but i did it in that much time i mean it was pretty stinking fast uh, let me just quickly do this side now too 
And again, you guys see me doing pushing out towards this way. That way I don't accidentally slip in and touch things like this. Um, if you guys get really good at this, you might think you might not need the plastic wrap. Uh, I'm not telling you you have to use it forever, but I recommend you guys use it because let's face it, if you get busy, if you do this too much too fast, you might accidentally get stuff onto the paper. And with that said, I'm actually going to wipe off my pinky right here. So as you guys can see, my pinky is dry. And then I'm gonna do one quick line with a dry pinky on the inside next to the paper. So I'm gonna wipe it off and do it again on this side. That isn't to spread the oil, that's just to wipe it off to make sure that I didn't leave anything behind that might get onto the paper, onto the pages. I don't wanna have that happen. With that said though, onto this right now, it's the same exact thing of what you guys just saw, just carefully doing it, going, going, going. And this one, I'm actually gonna show you guys, hopefully it comes through. We have a couple spots right here where the leather is actually torn up and I'm gonna call it the danger zone. And I'm actually gonna very, very carefully get that danger zone damage a little bit covered with oil because guys, when, when you have little rips, the rips just grow and grow. So I don't want them to be able to grow. So with that said though, I'm going along a little bit further and it's really nice. I wish you guys could really see this in person because the color change that happens, and obviously when you're doing this and doing it yourself, you'll see the color change. But I mean, guys, it is night and day difference what you do with these colors of these books. I mean, it's going from a tired, dry tan to a more vibrant red color, like more almost the color that you got on like a Jersey cow is what we're almost going for on some of these books. Uh, this one obviously is not nearly as dark as a Jersey, but excuse me, but it's definitely darkening up very nicely. Uh, with that said though, I'm going and oiling a little bit more. As you guys can see, I did too much oil again. There's more of the light glaze that I like to go on. I mean, we're not we're not uh, frosting a cake. We're more like di uh, glazing a donut right now, guys. That's sort of what we want to go for. With that said, I've got that dry off my pinky and along the edge, the along the edge at the end, guys, that is so important because otherwise you might leave behind a few globs of the oil. You do not want to leave behind globs of oil. That will be problematic in the future. Uh, going along, I actually, so uh, right here, guys, I'm actually going to oil this really quick, uh, not for you guys to see, not because I'm hiding anything, but because I'm hoping this will actually show some stuff a little better. So I'm doing something that you shouldn't do right now to, yeah, there we go. That's the magic. So the reason why I'm doing this, and yes, I just damaged the book by doing this, uh, but right here, guys, you see this black spot. That is the book board. There are spots on some books, if the leather's old enough, if the book's old enough, there will be spots where the uh, book actually has worn through from shelf wear, you're going to have the book board exposed. You do not want to put oil on the book board. Remember what I said about it, don't soak it through on the top side or the bottom side or the spine or anything like that, because it'll get on the book board. You don't want to put it directly on the book board either. So I just did that right here because it actually helps it show up, hopefully for you guys. Uh, otherwise, it's like the same color. You couldn't tell. But uh, when you guys are doing this in person, you can actually see the line between the leather and the book board itself. If you guys can see that line, do not paint, uh, finger paint with oil, uh, the book board itself. You do not want to get oil on that because it's a paper product. It's not leather. It doesn't need oil. It doesn't want oil. But with that said, though, guys, back onto this really quick. So... Just oiling along, minding my own business, going really soft. Um, so now that we're on the bottom of the book, guys, there's a lot more wear and tear. So see right here, hopefully you guys can see that. We have a couple like frilly pieces of leather right there. I like to just go over those with a little bit more oil and I just sort of pet them back down the direction that they ought to go. Oftentimes they actually will stay that direction and they oftentimes will actually end up back to where they came from, which is very stinking nice. It sort of is like, there you go, buddy. St go back with your family, stay there don't come up again but uh, with that said back to this just oiling along and I'm watching out for the book board uh, because again this is the bottom side of the book you're going to have book boards exposed sometimes just going along though really gently I hope you guys can see just how much that color is changing right off the bat something about the bottom of the books guys since they wear out uh, get worn so much they just really expose all that uh, unfinished leather beneath and that leather obviously guys really takes the oil as you guys can see I'm actually going over parts of the spinal again that we've already gone over and that's just because I missed a couple spots as I did it really quick for you guys earlier so doing that again and when you're doing the spine as you guys can see the spine's not covered entirely with plastic so you do want to be a little bit more careful or in this case a lot more careful because you do not do not want to get oil on your spine but with that said I'm just going along finishing things up real quick like as you guys can see, this can be a rather fast project if you guys uh, get into it. Of course, don't go too fast. You'll make mistakes if you go too fast. 
but it is something that you guys can do pretty quick. And what's the last step? Oh, the magic pinky of doom or cleaning, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just making sure I got everything done right here. And it's nice and clean now. Uh, I actually have a little bead of oil that went over the edge. So I'm just going to rub that in very softly and looking things over one more time, making sure everything's good. Um, just rubbing off the extra oil on my fingers just because I can. Uh, and I'm also rubbing it onto some spots where I feel like the oil is needed a little bit more, such as spa uh, spots where my thumb has like caused a thumbprint. I'm actually going to go over that in oil one more time. A really, really thin amount of oil. I mean, we're not reconditioning the leather at this point. We are just sort of covering up some little fingerprints that we might have left. Uh, fortunately for me, I don't have a whole lot of fingerprints. As I said already, this book was in a lot better shape than other ones, and I find the ones are that are in pretty good shape don't near uh, leave nearly as many fingerprints as you're going because they've already had enough oil in them but with that said though guys that's how this book is right now i'm going to uh wipe off my fingers really quick get all the oil off this i know was the towel that i oiled with so we are going to find the spot that i oiled with which is i believe right here uh yep sure enough right there uh and now that we have that Keep the oil part in that hand and then take a dry part of the towel and you want to do little circles all over the rest of the book one more time. Avoid obviously the really bad areas on your leather. You don't want to like rip up anything. But I'm just going over things really quick making sure that I have the uh, cover as dry as it can be. Um, Obviously, you don't want to dry it out completely. That would undo all of your work. But you really do not want to have any extra oil stuck on this. And guys, this actually is not the softest towel that I probably should have done, um, which is sort of a bummer. You want to get ones that are soft enough that they don't leave lines behind. This one is leaving tiny little lines on it, but uh, I can just go over that with my fingers later. So if you guys do make that mistake, you guys can do that as well. But what we're, do what we're doing here is just sort of taking up all the extra oil that we can because again we do not want oil soaking into the book boards this is a very hard uh, thing sorry very important thing that we want to do i know it looks like it's very hard i know it looks like it's something that only professionals could do but guys anyone can do it of course the professionals will probably be better at it but it's a lot simpler than you might think but as i said i left behind little lines from doing it with the towel just going over it with my hand like this gets rid of those things. And my hand is quite dry at this point um, since I already wiped it off. But yeah, that takes care of things really nicely. And guys, as you guys can see now, we have a nice shine on this book. It's in great shape. Uh, there's a darker area right here, which if you guys actually remember, remember I did that little dollop earlier on and said you don't want to do dollops. That's where I put the dollop. That shows you what that does. Uh, it will dry out and not show up anymore. Uh, this area right here where it's extra dark, this might actually stay a little bit darker. I have that happen quite often along the bottom part of books and sometimes on the top as well, which as you guys can see that part is a little darker still as well, but odds are it will dry out pretty nicely, pretty uniformly, and as time goes on it'll get more and more uniform in color. But that is basically what it takes to dry these books out, so sorry, to oil these books uh, down. Really simple, really fast, really easy. I know it wasn't too fast and it would be faster to just shove it back on the shelf, but that's all the work it really takes to do. However, the job is not over. So guys. This one right here, um, I'm just feeling it right now with my very, very dry hand. So I oiled with this hand. I keep one hand dry. Um, I'm just feeling it right now for how tacky it is. This one is actually not very tacky at all. Again, remember I said that this book was actually in better shape than the other ones were that I dealt with uh, from this particular set. And because of that, it didn't take as much oil. And because it didn't take as much oil, it's not as tacky once I'm finished. This book right here, honestly, guys, I think I could have it uh, sitting on the shelf with the rest of the books again in like two days or something like that. Uh, honestly, 24 hours I could probably do it but two days definitely could handle it but uh, once you do that guys you want to make sure that these books sit on their own don't touch other books all that sort of stuff for at least 24 hours depending on how much oil it took potentially more I have had several that I've actually set out to dry and I've had them dry for over a week just to make sure that they were not going to stick to the other books because again guys these things can get tacky and tacky as in sticky and if they are sticky you don't want them sticking to another book you don't want them ripping off the leather of another book so leave them out to dry on their own uh, for me I have this one sitting up like this right now so upright like this this is not necessarily the best way to do it um this is just how i've seen some people do it for me i like to leave all of my books sitting flat this is how you keep the less uh, least strain on the binding of the book itself 
That's why all the books you guys see behind me are laying on their uh, sides or their fronts or their backs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's the reason for that is I'm not putting strain on the bindings of these books because uh, if you do strain it, it can actually cause it to have some damage. So if you guys do lay them down like this, you will want to rotate them. So for me, I would leave them like this for a six hours, 12 hours or a day. And then I flip it over and sit it for six hours, 12 hours a day, depending on how much I wanted it to do. Uh, for the books that I have sit out for over a week, I have actually had it so I like leave them on one side for like two days after doing it, the first initial flips, you know. And then I just sort of make sure that I keep flipping them, flipping them, flipping them, drop them a couple times, I'm kidding, don't drop them. But uh, just to make sure that we get it to the point that they are not tacky. So this book again, guys, it's not very tacky at all. I mean, I don't even know if I'd describe it as tacky, but it has just enough moisture in it that I would and will be leaving out for a little bit of time. But with that said and done though, guys, that is how you oil and recondition your book leather. It works for books that just need a little bit of oil and for books that are absolutely powdered and need a whole lot of love. If you guys have books that the uh, leather is just absolutely powdery and you touch it and you get like leather powder on you, I recommend the finger method. Only use your fingers, do not use the towel. But if you have books like this one now that have been oiled and are in much better condition, the towel method works great. It allows you to do a much more consistent uh, application of the oil, which is definitely preferred. But if you're dealing with a book that it's absolute powder, anything you do honestly could help it a whole lot because oh, it gets really bad. But with that said and done, done though, guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope it inspires you guys to oil your own books. If you guys are planning on oiling your own books, uh, I expect you to be able to get your own cling wrap and cotton rounds and whatnot from your own uh, grocery store. I know I mentioned that you need Q-tips. Q-tips, guys, that's literally just to do the edge right here. Honestly, I like doing my finger a little bit more, but um, Q-tips can work great for that, but that's all that stuff for that. However, if you guys need the oils, so guys, again, mink paste and needs for oil are what I use, what I recommend. Um, if you guys need these, I will actually have links to these two uh, down below in the description because they are very important things to do. For me, I strongly recommend this particular brand of uh, mink oil, so I'm going to pronounce it totally wrong, but Phi Bing's uh, mink oil paste. I recommend this one because it has the best smell. There's a lot of mink oils that have a little bit weird of a smell. Um, for me, I have my grandpa's mink oil up there. Um, sorry, my great grandpa's mink oil. Uh, he was a logger, so that's some really old mink oil I would not use on any books. But uh, for me, I wear boots, and my boots are Red Wings, so I use the Red Wings uh, mink oil. It has a particular smell to it. This one smells actually good. Uh, the mink, uh, the Red Wing one, the Red Wing mink oil, it, it doesn't smell good on a book, let's just say. Uh, I do like it, and I did put it on one book as an original experiment, but for me, uh, I definitely have settled on this particular brand. Uh, so with that said, uh, be sure to look to, out for that. This one's uh, just Shep's uh, Needs for Oil. Again, I'm going to have links to those. Uh, they will be affiliate links. Using them will get a little bit of money from my channel. Very, very small amount, but something. Uh, but if you guys don't want to do that, literally just look up those two brands. Those are the ones that I use. Uh, those are the two that I recommend. So with that said and done, done though, guys, again, thank you for help uh, watching. Uh, please be sure to check out the description if you guys want to get those things. Be sure to subscribe right there and check out one of my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.